Hi hey guys, here's your video on 5.1 using fundamental identities. So after you're done watching the video, you should be able to use the fundamental trig identities to simplify expressions. So the next slide shows you the fundamental identities. We have the quotient identities that states that tangent of theta equals sine of theta over cosine of theta. Cotangent is cosine over sine. The reciprocal functions say that cosecant is 1 over sine. Secant is 1 over cosine, cotangents 1 over tangent, and then these three are called the Pythagorean identities, and it states that cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1, tangent squared plus 1 equals secant squared, and cotangent squared plus 1 equals cosecant squared. What we're doing with these identities is we're using them to simplify expressions. So let's go ahead and go to an example. So simplifying a trig expression. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to take your identities and substitute it into the expression that you already have to be able to simplify it. So if you look at um, sine of x, and we go back to our list of identities, you don't have any identities that say sine of x equals. So we can't replace sine of x with anything. But if you look at this, I have cotangent of x. And if I go back to my list of identities, cotangent is equal to cosine over sine. So I can actually make a substitution for cotangent. So now I can write this as sine of x times cotangent, which I can replace with cosine of x over sine of x. Now if you'll notice with the expression that you have, you have a sine of x on top, sine of x on the bottom, so they cancel. So this expression simplifies to just cosine of x. So your goal is to simplify the expression um, to get it down to a single trig function or just a simplified version of the expression that you originally presented with. Letter B, you can go ahead and factor. This is a difference of squares since the fourth is a perfect square. So what I can do is I can write this as sine squared x uh, plus cosine squared x times sine squared x minus cosine squared x. It's very similar to when you're factoring something like this, x squared minus 25. These are perfect squares, so that factors to x plus 5, x minus 5. So cosine to the fourth minus sine to the fourth minus cosine to the fourth is sine squared plus cosine squared times sine squared minus cosine squared. Okay, now let's go back to the identities and see if you can make any sort of substitution. We have sine squares and cosine squares, so we can look for the identity that uses sine squares and cosine squares, which is your first Pythagorean identity. And it states that sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1 which is exactly what I have right here, sine squared plus cosine squared, so that expression equals 1. So I have 1 times sine squared of x minus cosine squared of x. Now what I'm going to do next is I do want to get it down to one single trig function if I can. So I have sine squared of x minus cosine squared of x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to this Pythagorean identity, this one, and I'm either going to solve for sine of x or cosine of x. I'm actually going to solve for sine of x. So when I get this equation uh, with sine squared by itself, I have sine squared of theta equals 1 minus cosine squared of theta. So now I can replace sine squared with 1 minus cosine squared. Erase all that. Going back to this. So now, like I said, I can replace sine squared with 1 minus cosine squared of x. And then from here, I can combine like terms. So I have 1 minus 2 cosine squared of x. And then you're done, because we got it down to a single trig function um, since we could.
Now, when you're doing your homework assignment, if you read the directions, it does say that there are um, more than one correct answer. So there are several answers that you can get with this. It just depends on how you choose to approach it. So for example, with letter B, this right here, if you were to just stop at sine squared x minus cosine squared x, that would be an answer. Okay, um, the next problem, which should actually be labeled letter C, not letter A, um, we can go ahead and look at our expression. We have sine squared of x secant squared of x minus sine squared of x. Hopefully you'll notice that both of these terms have a sine squared of x in common. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor it out. So I'm going to factor out a sine squared of x. When I factor it out of this first term, that leaves me with secant squared of x minus, and when I factor out a sine squared from a sine squared, that leaves me with 1. Now this expression right here, secant squared of x minus 1, let's see if I can make a substitution. So I'm going to go back to that first page of identities and see if I have something that says secant squared of x. And there we go. I have secant squared of theta equals uh, tangent squared theta plus 1. Now if I look at what I have though, it's secant squared minus 1. So let's see if I can manipulate this equation to get secant squared minus 1. I can, because I can subtract minus 1 from both sides. So that leaves me with tangent squared of theta. So tangent squared of theta equals secant squared theta minus 1. So now I can substitute secant squared of theta minus 1 for tangent squared. So there's a lot of substitutions that you're making and a lot of manipulations that you're making for these identities. So I like to call these trig puzzles, which is essentially what you're doing, is you're replacing them and simplifying, so they're like little trig puzzles. So now I have sine of x, and then secant squared minus 1 is equal to tangent squared. And I'm going to go ahead and stop right here, since I simplified the expression. There are other expressions that you can get for your final answer because there is more than one answer, but I'm just going to stop right here and not, not do any more substitutions. For the next problem, I have cosine of x minus 2 over cosine squared of x minus 4. This denominator is factorable, so you always want to factor if you can. Um, it's a difference of squares again. So I have cosine of x minus 2 over this denominator I can factor to cosine of x plus 2 and cosine of x minus 2. So now if you'll notice, I have cosine of x minus 2 on top and on bottom, which means I can cancel it out. So that leaves me with 1 over cosine of x plus 2, which can't really be simplified any further. So there's your answer. So one of the problems that people encounter with this uh, section is they don't necessarily know when to stop simplifying. Um, I would suggest, you know, since you can have more than one answer, see if you can simplify for a couple of steps, and then if you don't think you can go, go any further, circle it and say you're done. Uh, the next thing we're looking at is adding and subtracting trig expressions. Very similar to just adding and subtracting fractions, which for that you need a common denominator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this expression so I have a little bit more space. So I have sine of theta over 1 plus cosine plus cosine of theta over sine of theta. Now if I want to add these two expressions together, I need a common denominator. So I'm going to multiply my first fraction by my second denominator. So I'm going to multiply this one by sine of theta. And then my second fraction I'm going to multiply by my first, my first denominator, which is 1 plus cosine. I'm going to go ahead and simplify my numerator. So sine times sine is sine squared. Plus, I can go ahead and distribute that cosine into 1 plus cosine. So cosine times 1 is cosine. Cosine times cosine is cosine squared. 
And all of that is over my common denominator, which is sine of theta times 1 plus cosine of theta. Now my denominator I'm not actually going to distribute, because chances are you might be able to cancel something out. So let's go ahead and look at that numerator. Now if you look at the numerator, you have a sine squared plus a cosine squared. That's one of your identities. It says that sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So now in my numerator, I have 1 plus cosine of theta over sine of theta and 1 plus cosine of theta. Hopefully you'll notice that your 1 plus cosines of thetas will cancel. And then that just leaves you with nothing on the top, so that's 1 over sine of theta. Uh, 1 over sine of theta is equivalent to cosecant. If you look at your reciprocal identities, going back to my identities list, um, 1 over sine of theta is equal to cosecant. So I'm going to go ahead and make that change. But again, if you just stopped right here and circled it, that's perfectly fine. I like to take it one step further. And there you go. All right, the next one that we are adding together need a common denominator. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply my first fraction by my second denominator. So I'm going to multiply this one by 1 minus cosine of theta. Whatever I do to the top, I have to do to the bottom. And then my second fraction, I'm going to multiply by 1 plus cosine of theta. Okay, so in my numerator, I have, uh, let's see, 1 minus cosine of theta. Plus, I can distribute the one over here as well, 1 plus cosine of theta, all over 1 minus cosine, 1 plus cosine. Now let's simplify the numerators. I have 1 plus 1, which is 2. Negative cosine plus cosine cancels, so I have 2 over 1 minus cosine of theta, 1 plus cosine of theta. Now, this denominator can be simplified further if I were to actually multiply it out. It's a difference of squares, so that means when I do multiply out the difference of squares, that leaves me with 1 minus cosine squared of theta. If you want to, you can actually FOIL it out if you don't understand where this came from. And I have a cosine squared, so I'm going to look at my identities with the cosine squared to see if I can simplify it further. Oh, it went too far. So cosine squared, I have right here. And what my problem said was 1 minus cosine squared. So if I want to, I can manipulate this identity to get 1 minus cosine squared by actually subtracting cosine squared from both sides. So now I have sine squared equals 1 minus cosine squared. And that's the substitution that I can make. So now I have 2 over sine squared of theta. Now whenever sine is on the bottom, that's the same thing as cosecant, just like we saw with the last problem. So this is the same thing as 2 times cosecant squared of theta. But like I said, if you were to stop right here, that's perfectly fine because there are multiple answers um, when you're simplifying these trig functions. Alright, so that concludes your lesson for section 5.1.